Welcome back everybody. Uh, today I'm going to do a full design um, using the Kafka scroller number three and the Kafka number one. Um, generally I really like using the number one over the number three um, but today I figure I'd do a little bit of both. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to start off with a gray color. Um, I like using gray because you can kind of throw any other color on top and it usually fits in pretty good. So um, with my practice board I can either do a horizontal, uh, vertical or horizontal design. I mean you can do them anyway but having one side longer than the other. I usually turn it sideways if I want to do something uh, horizontal. So that's what I did today. And I already have my grid drawn up on the reverse side of this piece of glass, which I showed you guys on a different video. And uh, I'm just kind of stalling right now, kind of for no reason. <laughs> but all right, I'm gonna get started. And uh, I always start in the middle with a, um, I think I'm going to do something like a broken up teardrop. So I'm going to start here. And I'm, I'm going to stop it about halfway. It's going to be a full blown teardrop shape. And then I'm going to pick it right back up right underneath it with another one. This kind of just gives me a little bit more character versus just one long one. And later I might put a dot in between it to kind of connect them. And um, next, I'm going to do some on either side. But I'm going to try to give it some space here. And this one's going to stop past the middle, about halfway into the second teardrop. There's a lot of different ways you could start these up. Um, this is just kind of like what I like to call the skeleton of the design, just the beginnings. And every time you do the next line, you try to pay attention to where the original one stopped. Sorry, I had a little video playing there in the background that's throwing me off. All right. Now I notice this one is a little bit different from this one, so I'm going to kind of fix that up. You really want to make sure that they are as close to the same as possible and landing on the same marks if possible. Because once you start to build up on the design, um, any inaccuracies will start to become apparent. So, I got those down. Now you could, you could pull the scrolls out from this, or you could start a whole different section and do some scrolls coming out from away from it. Uh, it's really up to you how you want to do it. Um, you could do some scrolls coming this way that do not connect. Um, for now, I think I'm just going to connect them. And I'm going to start right here. Always looking at the grid, making sure I have an idea of where I'm going to go. And I'm going to go around like this. I'm going to do two loops.
and this one's going to cut in, pushing down, pulling out. That's something falling on the dam. Piece of lint or something. So I didn't get to finish that, so I'm just going to pick it up on the fat spot and continue. Go around and down again. I got a couple of uh, spots where the paint kind of ran dry. So I'm going to kind of touch that up a little bit. It still happens to all of us. Sometimes uh, the paint just isn't flowing at that particular portion. Maybe uh, I didn't have the paint on all of the bristles. Now I'm ending right here at, right at this bottom grid line. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go around, try to make sure I hit all the same points. Go in, around, I'm going to push down right here, go back around, and see if I can make it the same. If you need to do it in sections, it's all right, just as long as your lines stay consistent. Nobody will be able to tell if you pieced it together. Always paying attention to how far away I was on the other side using my peripheral vision. Try to hit all my marks. And my thickness. Go back and touch it up a little bit. Now I'll take a look. This side came out a little thicker than this side, so I'm gonna thicken this. Well, also you also want to pay attention. Did it get thick on the outside of this part or on the inside? And you'll be able to tell by your spacing in your in your grid. So here it looks like um I could add on the outside of it to make it even. And here my uh, connection point was not that smooth so I'll just kind of smooth that out by filling in a little bit. Do the same thing over here since I added some on that side. And uh, that's sort of the beginning. Now at this point, you can branch out um, to elongate it if you'd like, or you can move on to another color and do it during that portion. But I think for now, I'm going to add a little bit more to the body here. Um, there's many different ways you can connect to this. You could pull right out of a scroll and add to it. Um, you could do more loops. You could just do some, there's a lot of different things, but for now I'm trying to keep in mind, um, I wanna leave some space and I wanna be able to add more colors because that is the goal. I think I'm gonna do three colors. each one uh, progressively uh, more vibrant. So the next one will be a little bit more vibrant 
and the last one should be um, quite loud. Now I did notice here that uh, it's a little bit off, but I think we'll make do. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pull out of this fat part, I'm going to go around, and then from there I'm going to pull out a tail. But I'm going to do it on my left side first, because if not I'll have my fingers all on the right side. Now sometimes there's nowhere to put your fingers, so you kind of got to put your fist down or just hover above it. Now I'm going to pull right out of this scroll here, and I'm going to go... Something like this. Push down. That's it. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now this got real close to that bottom scroll, so I'm going to try to do mimic. And it goes out all the way to here. It comes in almost right at this cross point, so. Now I'll push down. Now my ending point, I kind of splattered a little paint, so I'm going to make that fatter just to cover up my mistake. I'm going to do the same thing over here. As if there was a mistake over here, but there's not. I'm just wanting to make it even. Alright, so that's looking pretty good so far. I think um, one last thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to pull out and give it a little tail here to stay consistent with that horizontal uh, structure. Now at this moment I will like to say uh, give a shout out to old Steve Kafka because I did learn a lot from his videos just on YouTube. Um, you know, I, I bought the Wizard DVD and I, I got a lot of good information off of the Steve Kosheska uh, DVD as well. So both those guys, man, they, they really know what they're talking about. But there is a lot of good information out there. You just gotta, gotta weed through it and see what works for you because everybody's different. There are some do's and don'ts. Um, but it's, it's just a matter of how it works for you, the individual. So, I'm going to pull, actually I guess i got to do it on this side. Um, I'm going to rotate this thing because if not I'll be right in the camera. So I'm going to turn this sideways and I'll get it close so you can see. And I'm only doing this uh, so I don't run into the camera there. But I am going to pull a line right out of the top of this real thin go down to about the halfway point then I'm going to push and give it a nice tail and lift up at the same time I don't know if you can see that All right, I'm going to do the same thing on this side now I would recommend you try not to get too used to rotating the canvas because when it comes time to doing uh, motorcycles and cars and such, you're not going to be able to do that. So you're going to have to be able to go this way. Um, I'm just trying really hard to not get into the camera's view. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to pull up a real thin line. Try to follow it out. Pay attention to where I started. Pushing down, which is about right there. And then lift back up. There is my tail. So that's the beginning. And I 
think at this point I can add a couple of the wheat designs there on top to elongate the top. So what I'm going to do is start off real light. I'm going to go literally right above these two, but they're going to pull out and then go along next to them. So real thin. I'm going to curve it and then push down. And then again over here, real thin. Curve it and then push down. Now they are ending a little bit outside of these, but that's good because the stem is going to go along the edge. Now to get a thinner line, um, I'm going to kind of roll a little bit of paint off the brush here, off the very tip. And I'm going to start in the middle of this and very lightly pull a line, kind of just a curved line. It's going to end right there. Same here. Try to make sure your curvature isn't too strong to go along with the other one, and like so. So that is the beginning. Take a glance here. That is the beginning of the. Um, here I'll, I'll see if I can get a aerial view. Beginning of the design. So I'm going to put it back now. And if, I wish I could get a better angle for you guys, but it's hard to not be in front of the camera. So, I'm done with that color. I'm going to clean off my brush with lacquer thinner, which I got in this nice tall tube. It's easier to, uh, I don't have to use so much lacquer thinner, and it kind of covers up all of the brush hairs when I go to clean it off. Just wipe that off with the uh, shop towels. I bought the glass shop towels once, and those were garbage. They're like regular paper towels. So try to avoid the ones that say glass on them. Just get regular shop towels. You get them at Walmart or any uh, AutoZone store, Auto, Auto Parts, O'Reilly's, whatever. <clears throat> now, my next color. Just to save some time, I'm going to use... Uh, I'm going to use Kansas City Teal, which is a pretty vibrant color as is, but I think uh, we're just going to lighten that up for the third color. Now this bottle lid doesn't close all the way, so I use a piece of tape just to make sure it stays closed. There's nothing worse than opening your box and finding that one of your bottles has leaked everywhere. So we're going to palette that into the brush, brand new color. Um, I may have added a little bit too much reducer, so it's feeling kind of thin at the moment. <clears throat> and if it's, uh, if it's feeling real thin like that, you're, you're better off just waiting a little bit, waiting a little bit longer as you palette and spread it around some so it kind of evaporates a little bit and you'll start to feel it get thicker you'll feel it drag a little more because if it's too watery as I'm sure some of you have done the moment you put this thing on there it'll just blot like like just like a water droplet and that's not good or if it's too uh, too reduced uh, your lines will be super messy so we're gonna give it a shot like this um, so now you just add to this wherever you feel like would be adequate so I'm gonna start off by adding some kind of uh, teardrop shapes here that go curved along the edge it's pretty long those I can still feel my paint is too thin. <clears throat> but for you guys, I'm just going to keep on going. Make it work. 
it will thicken up as the air starts to evaporate the crap I just put in there. Um, I might do a little something. Let's see. Might do a little something that goes here. Real thick and thin, and it's going to go over the original. Same thing over here. I'm going to rotate this so I don't get into the camera. Make sure you guys can see it. And again, nice and thick. And I'm going to go over the original. Now this is just adding um, adding some structure to the uh, to the original skeleton, what I like to call the skeleton of the pinstripe. Now this is usually what takes me the longest because you know it can go anywhere. It's endless. So it's really up to you. I think I'm gonna make this part a little bit thicker at the bottom by adding a couple teardrops along there. Now we call them teardrops, but obviously they're they're going the wrong way. Uh, the fat the fat end should be at the bottom if it was like an actual teardrop, but I don't know if uh, I don't know what the hell else to call them. Keep in mind, I am self-taught. Uh, everything that I've figured out has been through the internet and some phone call conversations with a couple of the big wigs have helped me out, um, including Bon Dago, really nice guy. Spoke to him for about an hour and a half one day. <laughs> uh, super cool dude. And let's see. I think I'm going to add an actual scroll with this. So I'm going to go teardrop shape that goes along with this one. It's going to get real thin at the bottom. Same thing on the other side. And I'm going to add another scroll here. It's going to go out and then into itself and like so. So it's kind of going to add a whole other element there to the bottom half, um, similar to the original structure. So this is going to go down, around, and right back out. Now, uh, them scrolls there that kind of cut in and out of the original stuff, that really adds, it really adds a lot of flavor. It's kind of a risky move because um, if you mess up, you have to wipe off some of the original, some of the original stuff. But, you know, that's what these practice boards are for. You can get them moves down that way when uh, it comes to comes to the actual business at hand you'll know that you can make this happen and you won't be so uh, timid about it so I'm gonna do the same thing here this seems to touch on the edge of this line cuts through about the middle and right back out and almost to this bottom one okay also keep in mind the shape of the scroll when you do it. Is it oval shape? Is it round shape? Is it kind of a funny oblong shape? The more attention to detail you can have, um, the more oohs and ahs you will get.
and fortunately with this style it's uh it's so impactful that uh, some of the some of the slider mistakes people will overlook just because uh, it's such a cool style i mean even with even with old school pinstriping you know everybody's gonna have some characteristics to it that make it not perfect but uh it's got enough style man people will uh, people will easily overlook any imperfection all right so i think i'm going to add some big teardrops that are coming this way and this way because we have a lot of blue on the bottom not a lot on top so let's give this kind of we're going to start at the base of this fat part and push down hard and pull in and we're going to do the same thing again. and again rotating so I am not in the view of the camera and we're going to push down make sure you can see that push down go along the edge of this now I'm going to add a couple of these that go along with the original ones um, but they're basically going to end right here at this, these meeting points um, those are not perfect so I might drag them down to where they end evenly but uh, these are also going to go actually these are going to go inward so the opposite way of the other curved ones real light and push down right. palette knocks some of the paint off the tip and run some thin lines that go right into that crease same thing right here right into that crease that one came out a little bit wobbly Let's see if I can straighten it out some All right, so that is my second color. And I'll let you guys take a quick glance at that. Oops. And that's what we're working with right now. Sorry about all the camera movement. Now what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to just, just to save some time, I'm going to add uh, Robin, Robin Egg Blue to this. I'll try to find a spot where I haven't palleted out complete all the paint. Add a little bit of uh, Mineral Spirits and just palette right on top of the old paint. Um, I try to give myself a little section to work on and not cover the whole area that would take a while um, it is a drastic change it's a lot lighter uh, but it's not like uh, it's not like throwing in some yellow or something like that so it kind of keeps it a little bit more monochromatic but again you know when you start off with gray you can almost do any other color um, especially the blues and the greens. If you start off with gray and end with something like uh, 
sublime green. It, it gets really crazy. It's, it's nice. It's a nice contrast. Now, I palleted a bunch of paint onto it here, so I'm going to try to knock some off up here to give it a thinner profile. And that's feeling pretty good. So now you don't have to worry so much about the grid. You just kind of worry about uh, where where these doodads land. What do you want to add to it? Um, you don't have to go all out at this point. You can just add a little here and there if you'd like. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something here where there's some space. Like that. couple here kind of make it look like it's shooting out I see a hair coming out like see I'd rather pull that out before it ends up just laying on the image and just a quick note on losing hairs every brush is gonna lose hair some lose more than others it doesn't matter if they're the same brand, same model. Um, they're going to lose hairs right out of the box. They're going to lose hairs a month into it. They're going to lose hairs two months into it. It's just how they are. And it also depends on how you take care of them. So I'm going to do another one right there. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you might notice some, a little bit of paint splatter. Um, I've decided to palette right next to the image for you guys. I would normally not do that. Uh, I try to keep my paletting area below the image so there's no chance of paint splatter. Um, so forgive me for that. I just wanted you guys to be able to see the whole process. So that's going to go right here. And then the other one's going to go right above it. 